the author of the new book, Saving Freedom, Joe Scarborough, uh, and co-host Mika Brzezinski. Uh, they're with us this morning. Good morning. Welcome Good back. Good morning. <laughs> so yesterday, there was the tale of two press conferences. There was a Biden press conference, his first slate of cabinet picks, and then you know who with his big baby act, who took the mic for an impromptu briefing, which lasted 64 seconds, apparently. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Well, it, what's happening is exactly what we knew was going to happen. And, and uh, Donald Trump is continuing to perform his shock opera. This is sort of the finale. It's not a grand finale. It was more like a wah, wah. Yeah, may, 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 maybe so. And, and the, the comments from the, the people in the White House press corps afterwards were a lot like George W. Bush's after the inauguration, who said that was some strange stuff. What except, was that? Except to use another word. But, but, you know, there's nothing he can say. There's nothing that he's going to do that can stop the inevitable, which is 80 million people voted for Joe Biden, and Joe Biden won over 300 electoral votes. So he's going to be the next president of the United States. And I think the best thing we can all do is focus on what's relevant, and that is what the next administration is going to look like. And so far, boy, a lot of the picks look awfully great. Joe Biden introduced um, members of his cabinet yesterday, and it was truly a moment that reminded you of what this country was all about. So, okay, Joe, are you, are you surprised so many of your old Republican colleagues have stayed mute, mute, while the president tries to undermine democracy? Even now, there are only a few willing to call Biden president-elect. I mean, how quickly will their tune change once he takes office, do you think? I think it'll or change it? fairly quickly. I mean, that said, though, it, we once again find ourselves in a position where we're, we, we can be not surprised by what we're seeing, but at the same time still be shocked that these people will uh, continue to carry water for Donald Trump. You know, we could go back and talk about uh, Donald Trump locking kids in cages and Republicans remaining silent. We can talk about Charlottesville remaining silent. We can talk about the fact uh, that he denigrated uh, Gold Star parents uh, and Republicans remain silent, even right before the election when he was asking his attorney to arrest his political opponent, something they do in China, in Russia, in, you know, in, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, so it, it was just stunning that Republicans didn't speak out then, and they aren't speaking out now. I'm not exactly sure what they're afraid of. Joe Biden's going to be president of the United States, and they're going to have to deal with him. Joe, uh, my husband, Al Gardner. afraid of. Oh. Can't get through. I was going to say, I was just add, I was just want to add to what I said. Joe, you know what they're afraid of. They're afraid of the big bad wolf who, who will badmouth them to his base and then they won't vote for uh, the Republicans in Georgia, for example. Right now, that's what they're afraid of. Don't you agree with that? Well, but Donald Trump's not going to do anything for, for the senators running in Georgia. Donald Trump is worried about Donald Trump. He doesn't care about the Republican Party. He's never cared about the Republican Party. When will they he, learn contrib that? he contributed to Hillary Clinton nine times when that suited his purpose. So he's never going to help anybody but Donald Trump. And what's so discouraging to me is the fact that no Republicans, other than Mitt Romney, have even tried. To, to tell the truth about who Donald Trump is. Uh, and, and, and they're so obsessed about their base that it never occurs to them that maybe they can move their base along with them some. I mean, look, Donald Trump said it himself. Hey, what, you know, everybody, all these Republicans want across the country except for Donald Trump. Obviously, he's not doing something right. Joe, actually, I would add Larry Hogan, the governor of Maryland, to that list with Mitt Romney. I think he, too, has been a beacon of truth. But um, yeah. my husband, Al Cardenas, says hello. He was chair of the Republican Party of Florida when you were a congressman from this state. And, you know, it, it, felt, it feels like it was a completely different Republican Party back then. And so I, I ask you, where does all of this leave disaffected Republicans like you, like me, is the Republican Party, does it stand any chance of recovering from something like we just went through the last four years? Can, can they win somebody like you back? I, they can't win me back. 
I mean, you, you, you can't have a party that supported uh, a president that was talking about creating a Muslim registry, uh, a president who was talking about throwing uh, his political opponent in jail uh, two weeks before the election, who wouldn't guarantee a peaceful transfer of power, who told Bob Woodward he knew exactly how dangerous this pandemic was, and instead lied to the American people over and over again. Over 250,000 Americans have died, and they keep making fools of themselves. The Republican Party keeps making fools of themselves uh, by, again, kowtowing to this guy. So I don't know where I go. I'm not sure where you go. I don't know where Al goes. I mean, we're people who are used to being criticized and being called Nazis for supporting people like Mitt Romney and Jeb Bush. I long for those good old days. But where do I go? I don't go back to the Republican Party. I mean, Donald Trump, is a fascist. Donald Trump has behaved like a fascist. And if you don't believe me again, just look up the definition. Look at the fact that the man time and again has, has, has called on his supporters to commit acts of violence. Now, look at the fact that, again, he's talked about arresting his political opponents, undermining our constitutional yeah. norms, yeah. saying that the Constitution and Article 2 gives him unlimited power. My Republican Party, the Republican Party of my youth, remains silent. I can never go back there. So the question is, do I remain independent for the rest of my life? Do we have an expanding Democratic Party where Democrats welcome conservatives and welcome uh, suburban voters that helped elect George or, or helped elect Joe Biden this time? I mean, I think that's that's the big question.